So I thought today we'd talk about LED light bulbs and why they don't last very long and about a really cool channel that many of you may not have uh, ever seen. If you like seeing random things torn apart to learn what's inside and how they work then you probably should subscribe to BigClive.com on YouTube. It does all kinds of uh, great things and rather than just tearing stuff apart randomly he'll figure out how it works and explain it to you and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So for many many years ever since LED lights were super expensive like 15 bucks and up for one bulb and they never lasted very long. These are the guts out of an early one for example. It had a switch mode power supply and everything and they'd burn out in two and three months and stuff like that. I've always wondered why that was because they should last longer. We know they use a lot less current but why aren't they lasting so long? So now that you can get them at the dollar store at a buck for a 60 watt bulb but nothing's really changed they still if you use them a normal amount of hours per day two three months maybe four months down the road they're burned out or flashing or strobing or doing all kinds of wacky things what it comes down to is they're pushing the uh, components inside there harder but the nice thing that's changed through the years from the $15 and up bulbs way back in the day down to the ones you can get for one dollar is they've gotten rid of the switch mode power supply and now they just basically rectify the incoming power and here in the USA that's 120 volts to DC and run it through a simple uh, chip that just simply current limits what how much power goes to the LED. Now the reason they still go bad now that they've simplified it and re reduced the price is they're pushing the uh, LED units at 70 milliamps and more in, in the case of the ones we're going to look at right now and so they don't last very long and um, as Big Clive has pointed out many many times and other YouTube channels have pointed out with this new uh, current limiting chip the simplification of the bulb design you can change a single resistor in there and lower the wattage of the bulb sure it's not as bright but you could buy more bulbs and put more bulbs in that aren't as bright the point is they'll last longer a lot longer because <laughs> they don't get hot but uh, one of the fun ones that he was doing is he uh, came up with some S-Grad um, files that he lets you use for free for printing diamonds and other shapes and stuff like that and I did one little one here based on uh, on what he had designed and uh, it's going to be too hot for the camera I'm sure to be looking at but the main thing was is if you uh, popped this top off one of these and, and put a 3D printed one on there the way that the lights are normally they're going to get too hot especially if you're printing in PLA so um, the whole point was to reduce the power of this to something you're more comfortable with uh, whether you still want to use it just as a mood light or a night light or a reading light that's, that works fine. You can tell this was plenty bright but it doesn't get hot so it'll last a long time so something that I'd noticed that had changed at the dollar store ones, uh, I'm going to show you a little couple pictures here. I'm not going to zoom in too much. I don't know. Well, maybe I will. Maybe you want to see. Let's uh, get it up on the screen here. So basically, up to a few months ago, this was the layout that we would get in the in America, the dollar store, which you'd end up with in their in their numbered. Uh, one, two, three, all the way around to eleven. They only they had a eleven LED. I'm going to call them units because inside each one of these there's multiple LEDs, and they would had eleven of them. And this was the uh, current controller form to adjust how much, and this resistor would set how much current would flow through them. So if you wanted to make the bulb last longer and reduce the light a little bit, you could change this resistor out for something larger. Uh, back in the case of this particular bulb, that was a 12.1 ohm resistor. So, I mean, you could double that, put in a, a 20 ohm or whatever your next most common value is going to be. 22 ohm would be the next most standard value, and then 33 ohm. And uh, you could reduce the current and make the bulb last a lot longer. But that bulb is no longer the current one that uh, they're selling at the dollar stores. Now, they reduced the number of LEDs even less and these are all being sold as 60 watt 800 lumen lamps 
And now you can see you're down to just eight LEDs total, one through eight. And they've replaced the chip that was doing the current living room with all those multi-pins, the eight-pin chip, with this little three-pin package. And I like the three-pin package better because by design, its main tab solders right to the substrate, to the circuit board, so it's going to be able to dissipate its heat into the aluminum backing much easier. But you still have the one resistor that you can uh, clip out and change to something else. And, uh, for example, you may want to do a screenshot of this, or you may not. But this is the basic circuit that's inside the new ones. First thing they bring, the 120 volts AC, they bring it through a 32 ohm resistor to work as a, a fuse and an inrush protector for the little diode bridge, full, full bridge rectifier. Then they're running it through a 10 UF 200 volt capacitor with a uh, drain resistor so when power is turned off it will drain the cap all the way down. And then they have uh, the positive side going through all the LEDs in series. And remember each one of these LEDs is actually more than one LED. For example, when these are lit, there's a 17.1 volt drop across that. So figuring that normal white LEDs are somewhere around 3 volts to ignite, that means there's either five or six separate LEDs inside each one of these, then they're all in series. But they're hitting all of these um, at 70 milliamps, which is an insane amount of current to be pushing through those puppies. They're not going to last all that long. So the final one in the chain, the negative side, comes back to the little three-pin regulator. The negative side feeds into to that. And then there's a resistor between these two pins that sets the current. And from the factory on this new version, it's a 7.5 ohm, 70 milliamp set. If you measure the voltage across that resistor, that's a 0 0.495, basically half a volt. And uh, this is the circuit for the older one that was out there. And the resistor that they were using for that was a 12.1. So this new uh, package even though they're still, uh, well, they're driving it harder because they're trying to still get 800 lumens out of only eight lead modules before, and before they had 11 lead modules. So they've reduced their cost quite a bit. I'm sure this is less expensive. They've dropped the number of components that are on the board. But to uh, give you a rough idea what you can change if you're looking for particular amounts of current which is going to relate to the lifetime of the thing, all the way from the 7.5 ohm at 70 milliamps. If you doubled that to 15 ohm, the whole thing would only be drawing 39.1 milliamps, or you go to 22, you're at 25 milliamps. So you can see how it progressively goes down. I mean, I took it all the way down to if you had a 680 ohm resistor, you'd only be drawing 1.5 milliamps. And amazingly enough, even at 1.5 milliamps, the thing is still... Uh, plenty bright. Too bright for a nightlight. You could read by it even. But it uh, gives you a rough idea of the resistor values that you could change in there based on how much current you want to draw and that's going to come down to how ball, how long the, the bulb is going to last and, and how it's going to run. So then I took it a step further and decided, well, what if a person but I didn't want to buy anything for this experiment. I said, what if a person just wanted to be able to make the bulb veritable so I just grabbed uh, some old junk parts out of my uh, parts drawers. They've been around for 40 more or more years. So I had a uh, 500 ohm trim pot and a, uh, in this case a, a 38 ohm resistor as my limiting one because I knew this is the older bulb. I knew I'd never want it to go to full brilliance anyway. So that way by putting the trim pot in I can adjust this to any level of output that I want and I don't know how badly this will swamp out the camera or not. We'll find out. I'm uh, screwing it into a socket here and then we'll move things back a little. Let's uh, zoom this back down. It's in here. I've got it aiming away from the camera so maybe it won't swamp it out too bad. But you can get a rough idea. I think that was one of the lower settings there. See, I, you can crank it. I know actually I can crank it way down. Might even be able to look more at it with the camera. But you can see there's still quite a bit of light. 
but by putting the uh, trim pot a person could adjust the brilliance and you're thinking hey it's crazy he's reaching into a live circuit with his bare fingers I've been doing this kind of thing since I was uh, about eight years old and I'm more than 60 now so I pretty much know what I'm doing I do not recommend that you do anything like that unless you know what you're up to plus you'll also notice I only reached in there with one hand it's pretty hard to get killed if you're only uh, reaching into a circuit with one hand so in this one I took a different type of trim pot one that went uh, straight out and just notched the whole case and what I should do is probably glue that trim pot down so that's anchored down which I have not done but um, I don't know where the trim pot will end up in con in comparison with the being screwed in place but there we have the uh, the bulb and then right now I'm trying to stare into the light which is always hard to do but you see you can you could adjust it down so if you had a light up in a fixture and it wasn't the way you wanted it to be You could turn it down to just about any brilliance you want or or turn it up and I'm sure you could probably find a better trim pot again this is out of the junk box and that particular part is over 40 years old but um, any uh, small all plastic trim pot with a plastic shaft coming out you might even mount to the top up here if it's all plastic then you remove the shock hazard and you could just turn a knob on the top to dial in the brilliance you wanted you can also keep in mind that these uh, lower bases are basically hollow now. See, originally they had all of this uh, electronic crap crammed in there, and there was really no space down in there. But at this point, the only thing that's in there is that one inrush resistor and the capacitor on the back side of the circuit board, and the rest of it's hollow. So if you had a small plastic trim pot, you could drill a hole and affix that trim pot from the inside so a safe plastic shaft came out so you don't have any shock hazard. But... Um, I don't know, I just found it really interesting and I wanted to uh, show how the, uh, maybe the USA, because we've only been seeing the, the European versions of these lights online and they got so many, they got 15 or more LED units in them and, and what we get over here now is eight. <laughs> Not very many. I mean, I'd love to, to pay a buck more and get twice as many 15 or 16 LED units, can then turn them down, it would still be plenty bright and then last forever. But uh, that's what we got going on here. It's how you can make these LED bulbs last a lot longer by changing one little resistor. Follow BigClive.com. Let's bring him back up. Here he is right here. Follow BigClive.com on YouTube for all kinds of zany adventures and projects. If you're, if you're loving electronics, but he gets into everything. Mechanics, water just washing machines he, he there's no boundaries you put it in front of him he's going to tear it apart and figure out how it works and uh, try to teach you what he learns along the way